So many people point to the Ravens offensive line as the biggest area for improvement and where the Ravens need to fill in their holes. But let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTP Ravens Media. Bring Ravens content every single day. The draft is now less than a week away. Uh, if you don't already know, I am going to be out of town uh, during the whole draft process. I'm going to be at my cousin's wedding. I believe I'll be able to make uh, videos on draft day, and I'll be able to make videos before the draft on Friday as well as Saturday. Um, however, I will not be available during the draft. So as soon as the draft is over, I have someone, they're going to text me who the Ravens select and I'll make my instant reactions. So you guys still get my instant reactions right after um, I find out, but those will probably be uploaded the next morning rather than live as the draft is happening. Like I usually do, because again, I'll be at my cousin's wedding uh, with my phone completely off. Uh, but with that in mind, Let's get into this video because I want to talk about the Ravens offensive line and I've made obviously so many draft videos and I've made so many draft videos throughout the last couple of years. And this year I think is the biggest year in terms of new positions that we're looking at. Um, it's It's been a long time since the Ravens have been looking at tackle, have been looking at guard in the draft and much less so. We're not crazy, ambitious, looking for receivers or, or corners. Obviously, we could use a receiver. We could use a corner. We could use a pass rusher. But not like we've been searching, it feels like, and just demanding from the front office like we have in recent years. And so the biggest thing that people have talked about is offensive line, right? And it's easy. This is a great offensive line class. Um, you could argue there are six, seven eight tackles that in other classes might be first round tackles. But this year with, with how deep certain position groups are, including, you know, some believe quarterback, um, there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that go top five. Um, there's some really good pass rushers, really solid cornerback class. Um, obviously wide receivers are spectacular this year. That's going to cause some offensive linemen to fall. And when that happens, you know, the Ravens are sitting in a spot where they could absolutely be in a position to take a, a good offensive lineman. But my question to everybody is, what is the expectation for this rookie offensive lineman? Because when we don't draft tackle in the first round in mock drafts and, and we talk about strategy, right? Some people are like, we got to take A.D. Mitchell. We got to take Cooley McKinstry. We got to take Cooper DeGene, whoever it is. The, most people will say like round two, all right, then you got to take tackle. And I want to pose the question of why. Because my thought process when I'm looking at the Baltimore Ravens and their draft philosophy and the picks that they've made in recent years, right? We always talk about, okay, in the third round, we should draft a guy, try and develop him two years, three years, and then give him his opportunity to start. And we talk about that all the time, right? Oh, you should target this guy so that you can develop him because maybe they're not fully developed, um, but they have the physical tools. They have the athleticism. Like you think, hey, this guy could be something. But as soon as we get to the point where we finally get to find out if they are something, people look at it as they're not anything. We don't want them playing. We don't want them at all. They had their chance to prove it to us, even though when they were drafted, almost the consensus of Ravens fans was they're not going to be ready right away. Now you might be wondering, who am I talking about? First off, Daniel Falele, who was drafted in the fourth round, was a six foot eight, 380 pound behemoth out of the University of Minnesota. It might be Minnesota University. I think it's University of Minnesota. Um, absolute behemoth. But the problem was, hey, he's not necessarily up to the speed of the NFL game and it's going to take him some time. Well, He's now played in a backup role, essentially, for two seasons, um, was a former fourth-round pick, and the thought was he can sit behind Morgan Moses, learn from him. Morgan Moses is another really big offensive tackle. Learn from him, be a backup, get some reps in, um, and then eventually try and become that starter. And right now, it looks like he would probably be the best option at the tackle spot. But so many people are like, no, we can't have we can't have Daniel Falele starting. We have to draft uh, 
Amarius Mims. We have to draft Tyler Guyton in order to replace him and fill that hole that we lost from Morgan Moses. And the same thing can be said about right guard. Um, you look at Kevin Zeitler, obviously very good player, but we took a guy in the third round, another guy that was like, okay, yeah, he's going to be fighting for the spot, but you draft offensive linemen when they're not in the first round, you know you're going to have to develop them. Like, it cannot be overstated how difficult it is to find an NFL-ready offensive lineman outside of round one. And even inside of round one, it's very difficult to find. But we took Ben Cleveland in the third round. And the thought there was, hey, he can compete with some of these guys, try and become the starter. But in reality, at college, at Georgia, he was always a right guard. We don't have a right guard position opening. So... He can sit as a backup. Same thing uh, we saw with a guy like Andrew Voorhees, right? We talk about him and it's like, hey, this guy was drafted. Yes, he was injured, but it was like, hey, this guy was seen as like a really good guard coming out of college. Prior to the combine, he would have ta been taken day two for sure. He would have been taken day one. Day one guards are incredibly rare. Um, but it was like, okay. And we drafted him. And so many people have confidence. In Andrew Voorhees to become the left guard. But so many people want to write off Ben Cleveland. Because he's had his opportunities. He hasn't had his opportunities at right guard. Uh, which is where he was most comfortable in college. Which is where he's clearly been the most comfortable in the NFL. He's had some good reps. He's had some bad reps. But again, he was another just physical monster. Crazy strong. Crazy physical. Needed to work on the technique. So him and Falele are two guys that we've been like sitting on and the Ravens coaches have been trying to develop them. And as soon as it's finally their time for, you know, them to become the starter, so many people just want to write them off and say, Hey, first round, we got to go tackle second round. If Christian Hayes is available guard at a university of Connecticut, we got to take them. We got to get that interior offensive line shirt up. You know, we can't have Ben Cleveland. We can't have Daniel Falele starting. Why not? If they struggle so mightily to where the Ravens are at a negative, you can throw Patrick McCarry out at right tackle, and you're not going to be in a terrible position. Patrick McCarry is a fine tackle. He's not a pro bowler. He's not an all pro, but he's solid, right? He's not Alejandro Villanueva. I would argue Patrick McCarry is maybe barely worse than Morgan Moses. And the reason why we have Patrick McCarry is for, as a backup, he can play every position. But we've seen him play tackle. We've seen him play guard. I would say he's probably been best at tackle, second best at guard. So when I'm looking at the Ravens draft class and what they could potentially do with it, if we don't go tackle, if we don't go guard, not only do we have players we've been developing to at least attempt, and fans have been waiting for them to get the opportunity to play, we also have an experienced veteran that can play both of those positions if one of them doesn't work out. Now, I'm not saying the Ravens shouldn't draft tackle or guard in this draft. They do. I'm just saying they don't need to outright eliminate all of the other positions in certain premium draft spots because Ravens fans feel like we don't have an option because we do the Baltimore Ravens certainly have options at right tackle right guard and left guard three positions that are gone uh, from last year expected and I think that's something that we need to recognize when we're doing mock drafts, we're talking about the Ravens draft strategy, especially after day one, whatever happens, right? We don't, like, let's say the Ravens go, people get mad when I say Keon Coleman, even though he's my guy. Let's say the Ravens go A.D. Mitchell, much more liked player, apparently. Um, the Ravens go A.D. Mitchell. If we're looking at end of Thursday night or early Friday morning, we're looking, hey, who should the Ravens go after now? We don't need to just only look at tackle and guard. We can look at other positions because we do have options. And like 
I, I feel like it's really funny because so many times with these young drafted players, Ravens fans are furious because they're never given opportunities at these premium positions, right? Wide receiver, corner, running back, um, safety even. And we complain. Man, why have we not given James Prochet a starting job? He just never got his opportunity. Why are we not giving Tylen Wallace starting wide receiver reps? We hear these complaints all the time. Like when we draft these guys, I've talked about it when we draft them, especially day three players and, you know, back end round three players. Like you're very rarely getting an immediate impact player. The hope with those guys is you develop them in your system they become competent and hopefully above that and they get to that, you know, pro bowl. They get to that, you know, featured player on the offensive defense, defensive side of the ball. But in reality, all you're looking for is a guy that you can develop in your system. And if they're a backup, that's fine. But after two or three years, the hope is like, hey, maybe he knows the system enough to where we can plug him in and you find out. Sometimes it works out great. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, I think a, a time where it didn't work out was James Prochet. Um, I think the Ravens had opportunities, right, where they didn't get a lot of wide receivers and he, he was competing for those spots. He didn't end up winning the job. But, you know, a guy that did, Geno Stone, right? A guy that, you know, we just kind of had on the back burners for, for a couple of years he finally gets his opportunity. He's been developing. He's been sitting. I, we used to call him the the preseason the preseason demon. Like always got at least an interception every game of the preseason. It felt like, but he gets his opportunity. Interception machine in the NFL after years of development, after being a the Ravens' final pick in the draft. So. I just wanted to make this video not as an anti tackle video, not as an anti guard video. But uh, hey, if we don't get tackle or guard, and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, right? Like if the right guy's there, I talked about it. I like Tyler Guyton. If he's there and, and, you know, there's no like great receivers or corners or edge, like, yeah, draft him. I'm not upset about that. But if we don't get tackle and we draft tackle, let's say our tackle that we draft is round four, because the Ravens will draft a tackle. They'll probably draft a guard as well. But if it's not round one, two, or three, right? And we draft them day three. They're not drafting them to start there. They're drafting them to potentially compete, but more likely become a backup, develop. And if these other players that are starters end up leaving or getting hurt, then they can fill in. We have to remember Orlando Brown Jr. was looked at as a first round tackle, right? Horrible combine, does the combine while he's injured. He falls, he gets drafted in the third round. He was seen as a first-round tackle, right? He was not startable week one. He had to sit. He had to learn. He had to develop. He had to get used to the speed. He eventually became the starter, and he was very good. But we can't expect whatever the Ravens draft to tackle unless they get, you know, one of these premier tackles in the draft because there are guys. Like, there are guys in this draft. Um, Joe Walt can start right away, right? Uh, Fuaga can start right away. You know, you could argue, I don't necessarily think Tyler Guyton is a start right away, but he's a start this year guy. Mims could maybe start right away. Um, Latham maybe could start right away. Um, Fashanu, depends on what position you want to put him at, could maybe start right away. But even with the tackles, right? Like, you're not going to necessarily, it's not like wide receiver. It's not like quarterback where you're willing to just throw them out there because it's really important to make sure your tackles know what they're doing and have NFL speed experience. The Ravens have players in their locker room on their roster that have the experience that can start initially in the season. So we don't need to necessarily force ourselves into drafting by position. Remember, the Ravens are a BPA organization, best player available. Eric DaCosta is not going to sell out because he believes so firmly we need to tackle that he's going to blindly miss out on great opportunities because maybe 
a Jared Verse falls. Maybe a Kool-Aid McKinstry falls, right? Maybe whatever wide receiver you want in the draft, maybe they fall. He's not going to miss those guys just because he wants a tackle. Because remember when the Ravens drafted Kyle Hamilton, safety wasn't a need. Kyle Hamilton, when we drafted him, couldn't start because we couldn't take Chuck Clark off the field. But the Ravens recognized that, hey, this guy's too good to pass up on. And I don't think any Ravens fans are going back, looking at that draft class and going, man, we should have drafted for need. I really don't like having Kyle Hamilton on our team. Because after that pick, you know what we did? We traded Hollywood. We got a center. And we were smart about it. We didn't force our way into doing it. Tyler Linderbaum was available. We even traded back. I think I think we traded back two spots. Snagged Tyler Linderbaum. Now all of a sudden we got two pro bowlers in the same draft class because we were smart. We looked the best player available. And we took advantage of when players are falling. That's what the Ravens need to do. It's not about blindly taking positions because that's what the bad organizations do. That's what teams like the Cowboys do. They like force themselves into positions. And that's why they never truly contend. Let me know in the comment section down below your guys' thoughts on this. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for more Daily Ravens content. And if you have any draft videos, pre-draft videos you want me to do, let me know in the comment section down below. Just comment any questions or takes you want me to analyze. I'll definitely make a video on it. Thank you, and I'll see all of you again tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh,